was Brock Lesnar's return to the UFC. I can't listen and to this And he did guy. it how? Through sourcing, because he is an esteemed, impeccable journalist. <laughs> His batting record, he said at one point, is near 1,000. Because he is just that dang good at the job. <laughs> Listen, I won't even argue that Ariel is probably the best journalist that MMA has. But listening to this guy whose face is the shape of a triangle, whose face literally at all times simultaneously says, flush my face down the toilet and my boyfriend will beat me up if I don't bring a sandwich home after work. And essentially what happened was, I believe this is UFC 199 or 200. 200. I think 199. 200. He was told that he needed to be removed from the press room or from uh, the, uh, where the press uh, report from in the arena. And he refused, but then he was told multiple times, yeah. had his cameraman go with him, and Dana White told him, you're done. You F this up. And he made a saying of there's, you know, a bullet to your head by the Fertitas. Because you ruined this. <laughs> hey, bulletproof research, dude. Wow. The Young Turks is definitely where everyone should come for their news because you definitely locked down this story about Ariel. Wow. God, could you please give me the best topic of all time for Jesse on Fire? What would you like, my son? Dealer's choice. How about if Ariel Helwani goes on the Young Turks and talks about what a fraud Dana White is about his free speech stance? <gasps> you would do that for me? It's done. Go on YouTube. I will. Jackpot. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at Ariel Helwani joining one of the most hyperbolic left-wing channels of all time uh, in the MMA community and talking about Dana White being a fraud. The title of this interview is Ariel Helwani exposes Dana White for the fraud. He truly is. I can't believe they didn't capitalize fraud. Get your clickbait game on point, the Young Turks. If you're going to do exposes in all caps, you also do fraud in all caps. Rookies. Rookies. Also, why don't you do your boy a solid and subscribe to the channel. You know you want to. Also, why don't you check out that Happy Hippo at happyhippo.com. They got them energy shots. I'm about to go, go. <laughs> but seriously, happyhippo.com. You're going to love it. That shot is going down my throat before I go to jujitsu in about a half an hour. HappyHippo.com. Check them. I cannot believe that Ariel did this. Let's rock and roll. Thank you, God. Let's go. Every hand, right? And so this is the other aspect of what happens when everybody can show personality. That this dude has a bunch of opinions that, personally, I won't even categorize for the moment because, again, I'm not here to moralize. Pablo Toure recently sat down with Ariel Helwani to discuss the UFC. Oh, wait a minute. Ariel didn't go on the Young Turks. Sorry. The Young Turks is uh, just go. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Ariel sat down with former ESPN colleague Pablo to, to go scorched earth on Dana White and his completely hypocritical stance on free speech. Okay, so this actually was not on the Young Turks, but the Young Turks is covering it and calling that. So uh, very excited. Now, obviously, you guys have all seen this. So let's just uh, let's come back. That to get to the point that Dana White, the president and CEO of the UFC. Free speech. Gonna control Wait. what people say, going to tell people what to believe, going to tell people. I don't tell any other human being what to say. Free speech, brother. People can say whatever they want and they can believe whatever they want. As it pertains. Well, that is a very, very, very controversial topic. I mean, geez, did you say let people think whatever they want? <laughs> Dana, that's not how we do. Let's go ahead and make sure that we tell people exactly what to think and exactly what to feel. And we definitely don't let them say things that we don't agree with. Ready, right, Ariel, go. Thanks to MMA um, and Dana White, this has been a conscious effort on his part over the last few years. And I would say probably dating back to 2016, where it has increasingly become this stance. And it's a stance, I wanna be clear, that has become this rallying cry for a whole swath of American culture now. Yes. Because finally someone someone says it. It's very smart and calculated. But Oh, 
it's very smart and calculated as opposed to it's really what he thinks. And I'm sorry, did this guy just do that as if it was like, finally someone said it coming from a bunch of rubes. You're like, or a bunch of people who just believe you should be able to say what you think. How is this controversial? What I want the audience to understand is when he sits there and says, I don't police speech, I don't tell grown men and women what to say, and I've never done that, it's actually not true. As we have gone over, White punished Nate Diaz for using an anti-gay slur in the form of a fine and a three-month suspension. Former fi When was that again? Fighter Matt Mitrione attacked the trans community. Oh, he did? He attacked the trans community. These people... Oh. He called a biological man who broke the skull of a female fighter and lied about being a biological female a lying, sick, sociopathic, disgusting freak. You know? I mean, I don't know. What would you call uh, a person who had an intact penis and broke the skull of a girl? <laughs> and then said they enjoyed doing it. I loved every second of it. I loved it. Just so you guys know, Fallon Fox said that. I love these people, dude. Labeling them, his words, freaks with mental issues for nope. wanting to fight against a fellow woman uh a fellow woman no nope. that is definitely not what he said he called fallon fox a freak for lying about being a biological woman and then breaking the skull of a female you manipulative lying propagandizing this is not going on members only don't say those words a tyt with eight hundred and sixty-two thousand subscribers 862,000 subscribers. How many views did this get yesterday? 50,000. Hmm. So my channel with 140,000 subscribers gets more views than you. Hmm. Just something to notate about, uh, you know, who is winning. And, oh, 2,000 likes. Wow. Oh, God. I, let's read this. Let's read the comments and then we'll come back. What a horrible pig. It's funny having Ariel on here when he openly bashes Muslim fighters and is a racist himself. What did you think was going to happen if you ended up on TYT, Ariel? I realize you didn't, maybe, I don't even know if this was done by, the, like, I don't even know if, uh, uh, is this the, like, is this the guy, Rick Strom breaks it down. Shut up, Rick Strom, you crybaby. Oh my God, look at this, Ariel, he's their favorite, dude. Ariel Barry's MAGA loser, Colby Covington. Good God. Look at it. Dana White's boot licking of tea is finally paying off. Trump boot lickers are destroying the sport in real time. Dana White snaps after a reporter uses his own logic against him. Fighter vomits up pure hatred as ESPN and Disney stay silent. Probably they figured out that you guys represent about 1% of anybody who spends money on anything. Uh, Henderson versus Belendez. Good time. Oh, okay. Cool. TYT is a clown channel. Correct. Correct. Uh, oh, here we go. Good. It's all good people. Oh, boo-hoo, whiners. The world is sick of your dictatorship of English. Okay, awesome. Matt was right. Awesome. We all know what a great guy Brock Lesnar is from Vince McMahon text. Uh, what? Dana and his lackeys are so pathetic. It's hilarious. I like UFC, but it's clearly dominated by some pretty unremarkable dudes who carry some pretty messed up viewpoints. Boo, 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 boo. You lost me at wanting to fight a fellow woman. Oh, there you go. He's on our side. Uh, Sean's a POS that just wants attention. Let him go cry some more. Oh, geez, good one. Wow, you got a lot of time to sit there and try and stir in the pot. Yeah, I keep reading these like as if all of them are trash, uh, except that some of them are not. So, uh, you yeah, know. MAGA douche Dana. Blech, disgusting. Anyway, uh, isn't the first rule of journalism not making reporting about yourself? Ariel and others do, uh, don't do this and still make the story about themselves. I don't know. Maybe look at interviews with Wanda Collin. Great. Okay. Let's just continue this uh, embarrassing nonsense. So he knew what he did wrong. If he was standing in front of a panel, right, or a judge, and he was arguing on why a, 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 somebody who used to be a man shouldn't be allowed to fight a woman, he wouldn't have said it the way that he said it. He would have said it completely different. There's nothing wrong with having a point of view. Everybody's crying, oh, it's freedom of speech. And 
Yeah, okay. Work at any company anywhere in the world, okay? And give your opinion in, in an ignorant, you know, where you come off sound like an ignorant bigot. See how long you last at that company. So what was that? So, different time. Different time, you know. They pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until everybody had to put their foot down and then all of a sudden, everything's allowed. That's your fault, you got <laughs> Hey, if you were going to guesstimate whether or not me and this guy agree on things, what would be the indicators that we probably don't, do you think? The, gla the glasses, the shape of our face, they're all, hey, do you think you can make his face look like a triangle? And they're like, well, I don't know, can we make you look more like a pit bull? Uh, I don't know. I like, I look at myself, I look like a dog right now. Also, I had a dentist today tell me that he thought I had the strongest bite he's ever seen. He didn't mean it as a compliment. He was talking about how I have destroyed my teeth in the back because I bite everything so hard while I'm sleeping. All right, let's go ahead and listen to this really tough looking guy that I am terrified of. He looks like he is scary. By the way, if anybody knows jujitsu, you know that this guy might definitely be able to beat me in a fight if he is uh, a very high level jujitsu practitioner. But if not, psh, let's continue. That just coincided to have changed with the rise of Donald Trump. Oh, his policy was actually quite clear. Like you can't go around offending people. In fact, I would say his policy was keep it to yourself. Helwani would then use the UL Romero example. But the reality is this. You just won the biggest fight of your career, you know? Um, America doesn't want to hear your thoughts on Jesus. And, you know, keep that stuff at home. Religion, politics, all that stuff. When you're out there fighting and you're being interviewed, they want to hear about the fight. It's awesome that you love Jesus. Love Jesus all you want. Just don't have to do it publicly. Thus, Torre. So, again... Do you think that Dana changed his mind for no reason? Like, you think that, like, this all changed because Dana's just a big hypocrite? Or do you think you guys changed the entire landscape of the country and the world, and the new Dana is a response to what you guys did? You know? Like, you know what this really is? Is that we were down to cooperate. We were down to do what you wanted us to do, to get along, to go along, to get along. Okay? Okay. The reason that you're getting this version where we're like, we don't give a shit what anybody says. Fuck you. Fuck you, Young Turks. Fuck you, Ariel. Fuck all you fucking crybabies. Is because you guys changed the fucking rules. You guys turned it into war. Okay? You did that. Not us. You did that. So don't complain that now you're getting a wartime Dana and a wartime everybody around him. Crybabies. A asks the important question. When it comes to the question of what is the difference in incentive, in motive, in rationale. Why has it flipped? They continue to ask Sean Strickland, Dana White, and others is, where's the line? How do you police this? What do you need to do? What do you say to your fighters if it goes too far, et cetera, et cetera? That's not the question to ask anymore. The question has always been, what has changed? And this is why Helwani is so- I just told you. I told you what's changed. You made it into a war, okay? You guys did. Remember when you, I mean, a war, I mean, come on, that's a, that's a stretch. Hey, remember when you guys locked the entire world indoors for three years? And then when we would be like, hey guys, I don't think that we really need to be indoors. I've had this thing twice. I think I'm good. Nope. You have to stay indoors. And by the way, you're fired because you wouldn't take the jab. And oh, by the way, if more information comes out that you guys were hundred percent right, doesn't matter. Uh, you still can't talk about it. And if you do, we'll just pretend like, oh, we never said that, dude. We never said that. Oh, you said that. No, no, no. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. You guys turned it into a war. That's what changed, dude. Cry babies. Look at why do all these guys look like such pussies. So oh, great. He breaks it down to a T. The turning point is the summer of 2016. In the summer of 2016, July of 2016 to be exact, the UFC is sold for $4.025 billion. At the time, an astronomical number. No sports entity had ever been sold for that amount. In retrospect, it was a steal, right? Mm -hmm. If it's sold today, it's probably 10, 11. Just look at yeah, WWE, that's like right? An NFL team plus a little. Exactly. And so shortly thereafter, Dana, like literally a week or so after, Dana White's first appearance publicly is at the GOP convention. 
on behalf of his friend Donald Trump, who has been a longtime supporter of combat sports, pro wrestling, boxing, and MMA, who would host events at his uh, casinos in Atlantic City and whatnot. And he went up there, and it was a bit of a departure for Dana White because he had always been like the guy who said, like, keep politics out, keep religion out, keep these controversial. Right. So new owners gave him carte blanche, do whatever you want with this thing. And so he did. Takes out. What's up, GOP? And then in 2016, because of the rise of Donald Trump and his relationship with Donald Trump, he started to get a little bit more political over time. And now he would probably say, I'm not getting political. But of course, when you're appearing at something like that, you are getting political, right? Donald Trump becomes president. And that's an amazing ally to have. And he's on planes with him. And the Venn diagram between the two worlds is starting to get even bigger. That little part in the middle, whatever the hell that part is called, is starting to get bigger and bigger, yes. right? The MMA world or the UFC the world. Overlap. And, yes, yes, the overlap. 2020, everything changes. What changes in 2020? COVID happens. And what happens? Everyone else shuts down. If it was up to Dana White, he wouldn't have shut down one single event, one single weekend. He would have kept going. Correct. The first event that shut down was in late March of 2020. He wanted to keep going. He tried every which way to keep going. Mm -hmm. He found um, a Native American um, reservation uh, in the United States, in Oklahoma. He found another one in California. That it is amazing that this is being used as support for Dana being in the wrong, given what we know now. Were you know not beholden to the same state rules that he was going to hold events. Eventually, in mid-April of 2020, Disney said stop. Disney being, you know, the parent company of ESPN, his broadcast partner said stop. We need to take a breath. That only lasted three weeks. And then early May, they hosted a series of events in Jacksonville in an empty arena. And at the time, he said, I'm going to be first. I'm going to, you know, keep the show rolling. And what it did was it made his sport exponentially popular because, A, people who were bored watched. The rise of sports gambling, right? Mm -hmm. People are now saying like, oh, I got my parlay Saturday night. I've got eight hours of entertainment when there's nothing going on. Huge, right? That's true. And because of the people who thought COVID is a joke, this is all a joke. This is the one guy who's spitting in the face of all this. This is my guy. Towards the end of 2020. Right. Yep. Yeah, that. So this is, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, Ariel has actually not said anything that, is I mean these people are using him actually at least so far we're gonna see where this goes but so far people are just using Ariel to say Ariel exposes Dana White for the fraud he is he hasn't even said Ariel has not said a single thing that is non-factual thus far so let's just see if he actually says anything or if these scumbags are just taking things that he said and then pretending as if there's something else going when he on. was oh, okay th there's a lane here and there's an opportunity to be the voice in the sport of this entire community that maybe feels like the other sports entities are not serving them or in line with their beliefs. Ah, so it's a calculated, uh, a calculated decision. I don't know, man. Uh, I think that Dana's a human, right? Like what he's saying, I'm not, I, honestly, I don't even think Ariel's saying anything dishonest. I just think that the context there is pretty straightforward, which is Dana is actually like us and agrees with us in that when I turn on the NBA, okay? When I turn on the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, NFL was gonna do a black national anthem, a separate black national anthem, but we're the racists. They're all, we can't have a national anthem that applies to everyone. We need one for white people and one for black people. We're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you turn on the NBA, and you have Black Lives Matter plastered across the bottom of the floor while Black Lives Matter with all of their stuff on is burning down the cities, okay? And you have that in every single sport. And then Dana, like you think that it's possible, you don't think it's possible that maybe Dana is just like us where we're watching going, what is this dude? How are they letting this slide? How are they allowing us to be locked in the house? How are they, how are they telling us that if we do anything outdoors, we're breaking the rules and yet, these people with Black Lives Matter are can go and like bombard stores, burn them down, fill the streets with unmasked people crying about police brutality. And there's nothing for you guys to say about that. Maybe you think maybe he's just choking on that. And he's all, I have a platform. So maybe I'm going to say the opposite. But again, Ariel has not said anything that 
I would be yelling directly at him about these people thus far are just taking things that he's saying and, you know, Ariel, I mean, who knows? We're halfway through. As we have discussed many times over, the UFC being Trumpified, not that they didn't have it already, but this cause and effect has led them to carve out an even greater, more refined, more defined path in the pantheon of sports. But when asked about being a free speech absolutist, as in, yeah, the fighters can say whatever they want, but so should the journalists and reporters, is what Pablo Torre brings up. Here was Helwani's answer. It is the great irony. Uh, Dana White, who says, you can say whatever you want. I'm not going to tell any man or woman how, the, how to feel or what to say, uh, is, is maybe one of the most sensitive people that I've ever met. And... I know better than anyone because Dana White doesn't like me. I have not interviewed Dana White since 2016 because Man. he didn't like that I would go on my show and talk about the most benign sports minutia topics. Again, Ariel has not said anything that I'm going to throw him under the bus for yet. Nothing, actually. I am very much down to throw uh, <laughs> throw this... TYT imbecile who is coming in and chiming in under the bus. I think me and that guy might hate each other. If like if we were ever in the same room, I think we would literally just look at each other and be like, are we going to keep this cordial or am I going to like throw you through a window? What? I'm talking about, you know, revenue sharing. I'm talking about collective bargaining. I'm the talking business. the business of MMA. And in addition to that, breaking fights and, you know, the same crap that you hear on sports talk radio or podcasts or YouTube, wherever. That's what I'm doing. And in their mind, I was supposed to be something else. I was supposed to be the type of media that he generally talks to now, which is very, very friendly, bro-y, like, isn't this next fight going to be great? Isn't this awesome? Someone's Let's... on the same team. Exactly. That's what they wanted. I'm on the same fucking team. That's for goddamn sure. And uh, I, I just... I, I wasn't looking for that. I was looking to be, you know, Walter Cronkite. You know, he's one of my idols. My my second son's name is Walter because of Walter. I wanted to be Mr. Big. <laughs> okay, that's kind of gangster though. Day journalist, right? <laughs> Man, you're gonna get stuffed in a locker after this podcast. That's, that's fine. That's that. fine. That's fine. Um, and so I wanted to ask certain questions. Just real quick, I'm not stuffing anyone in a locker except this dude that you see down there. That guy. He, they should name him Rick. Stuff me in a locker. I wanted to talk about certain things and that would increasingly upset both Dana White and Lorenzo Fertitta. He tried to make my life a living hell at ESPN and, and preclude me from talking to certain people or go certain places or, or, or have opportunities. It was not very fun. For those who don't know. I have said over and 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 over, 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 over. I will never stop saying. If I were Ariel, I would be real bitter at Dana also. Whenever we talk about this particular topic, I only bang with, Dana, with with Ariel because we're on the topic of free speech. And Dana is now the the most uh, public supporter of a blanket free speech platform that we have. And I completely agree with basically every single thing that he says. If I were Ariel, it, w it wouldn't be this topic, but I would find some reason to have beef with Dana. So I don't even I don't even fault Ariel for this. This video where I'm ripping these fools is because it's on TYT and this guy, this guy is sitting. Oh, can you believe how Trumpified the UFC is? Dana White is exposed as a fraud. It's like, shut the fuck up, geek. Why don't you uh, point me to whichever toilet looks the most desirable and I'll flush your head down that one instead of whichever one seems less desirable. I'll be nice, dude. I will give you whichever toilet you want and I'll flush your head down that one. Cry baby. On demand, we have covered this previously. Essentially, Ariel Hawani, as he discussed in this clip, has been breaking news about the fighters, about pay, and breaking the news about fights that are going to be upcoming. And one of the biggest ones that... Uh, yes, Giselle, I'm filming right now. What would you like? What time are we going to go to jujitsu? What did I tell you last time we had this discussion 20 minutes ago? Huh? I said we we're leaving at 5.15. What time is it right now? What time is it? Is 4.41, 5.15? No, beat it. Now I have to remember to edit this out.
that he broke was Brock Lesnar's return to the UFC. I can't listen and to this And he did guy. it how? Through sourcing, because he is an esteemed, impeccable journalist. <laughs> His batting record, he said at one point, is near a 1,000. Because he is just that dang good at the job. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Listen, I won't even argue that Ariel is probably the best journalist that MMA has, okay? I, I will I will give him that, dude. The guy, he just said that he wanted to name, he named his kid Walter after Walter Cronkite. Cronkite. Dana, I'm sorry, Ariel carved out a, a place for himself as the number one MMA journalist. But listening to this guy, whose face is the shape of a triangle, whose face literally at all times simultaneously says, flush my face down the toilet and my boyfriend's gonna smash my face in if I don't bring him home dinner. He can get so rough with me. <laughs> oh man, let's watch like two more minutes of this guy and then we're gonna wrap this up because I just watched, uh, you know, like I fast forwarded and the only thing that happens is Ariel tells a story that we all already know. His batting record, he said at one point, is near a thousand because he is just that dang good at the job. And essentially what happened was, I believe this was UFC 199 or 200. 200. I think 199. 200. He was told that he needed to be removed from the press room or from the, 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 where the press uh, report from in the arena. And he refused. But then he was told multiple times, yeah. had his cameraman go with him, and Dana White told him, you're done. You F this up. And he made a saying of there's, you know, a bullet to your head by the Fertitas because you ruined this. <laughs> hey, bulletproof research, dude. Wow. The Young Turks is definitely where everyone should come for their news because you definitely locked down this story about Ariel. Wow. Great job, guy. Joke. Unfortunately, I have to go to jujitsu, and this video is 28 minutes long, so we're wrapping it up. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, triangle face. You are a terrible reporter, dude. Do just a little bit of fact checking or just talk nonsense. Bye. Hey, we could we did a debate, dude. I'll come on your show anytime you want, dude. This red face, your triangle face, we can rip wrap it up, my man.